We've just taken off from Nairobi Wilson. And we're on our way to Malindi. Justice Kim Whaley and myself are on a four-day training tour down through Malindi, Mombasa, Tanga, Dar es Salaam, and back to Nairobi on Thursday, today being Monday. We're at present 400 feet above the terrain. Uh, taking off of uh, Wilson, we have to remain at this altitude for a distance of approximately 20 miles. We have to clear the control zone. And they have IFR, BFR separation throughout the terminal area in Nairobi. I don't particularly like having to fly at 400 feet for 20 miles, but there isn't much I can do about it. We're in a uh, Cherokee uh, 235, cru cruising at about uh, 160 true airspeed miles per hour. In a moment we'll be climbing up to altitude. We're just passing the edge of the control zone now. Now we'll be approached by Yankee Alpha Tango Delta, control zone boundary. Approach Tango Delta, East Air Center, 118.5, roger. Now changing over to East Air Center. Taking up a new heading, we're heading 095. We're going to uh, intercept the 125 radial out of uh, Nairobi. We'll climb up to uh, 7,500 if the cloud allows us. It's a little low They're, uh, right at the present time. Uh, and we've got hills uh, at an elevation of 7,000 that we have to go through or over or around. And uh, they're about 15 miles ahead, the first bunch of them. And it looks relatively clear, the visibility being oh, 15 miles. Justice Kim Whaley is doing the flying this morning. He has had a few hours on instruction, unfortunately did not finish his uh, license. Uh, so I sort of ride as a passenger when we go on these trips. We're starting our climb now, we're out of 6300. We're running a density altitude of uh, a little over 8000, the temperature being 20 degrees centigrade. And I have to call East Air Center now. East Air Center, 5 Yankee Alpha Tango Delta, 118.5. Uh, East Air uh, Tango Delta departed Wilson at 0725, VFR to Malindi, estimating Malindi at 0925, over. East Air Center, Tango Delta, Wilco, call operations normal, 0820. 118.9 for ops normal, roger. As we go on all our VFR flights, we have to monitor We have to monitor East Air Center on one of two frequencies, 1185 for the northern part of East Africa, and that includes Uganda, and 118.19 for the southern part, which includes Tanzania. We're about 200 feet below the clouds right now at 7,000. Uh, it looks like we're going to be going through the hills rather than over top of them. Uh, there are huge uh, gaps in the hills of about a mile wide and uh, we, well I don't anticipate any problem. I'm a chicken flyer. I usually turn around if it gets too bad. I'll report again in a few minutes.
We're just going over the uh, Athai Plains. That few minutes was a matter of uh, 30 seconds, by the way. And I thought I'd just tell you about the terrain we're going over. It's called the Athai Plains, which stretches for perhaps 50 miles from Nairobi, south, east, and west. It's a very, very flat land with, oh, I don't know, two trees per acre and uh, a few natives, mainly Maasai, and running cattle. It's very barren. The color is a light brown. We're through the rainy season now, and uh, it's starting to dry out again. And it's usually dry for about eight months of the year. During January and February of this year, the drought was so bad that the Maasai babies were dying of uh, thirst and hunger. And in some places, 80% of the Maasai cattle were dying because of the drought. It has since improved, and it's been one of the wettest years since March on record. As a matter of fact, from our point of view and living in Nairobi, the weather has been miserable. We've had off and on continuous rain since March. It should have only lasted till the end of May, but it has continued right through till the present time. Usually, August and September are nice, and then you come into October, November, and uh, you have what they call the short rains. Uh, in other words, maybe a couple of showers a day from a cumulus type of buildup. Well, here we are in September, still getting rains, and we're due to start the short rains in another month, so I don't see any relief from the rains until the end of November, at which time we should get into clear, dry weather. I will say one thing, this type of weather has certainly made it interesting flying. We have had to divert uh, on many occasions, and uh, it keeps us on our toes. I can see ahead now, again, we're still at a visibility of 20 miles, but the tops of the hills are in the clouds. We're cruising at 7,500. We're uh, about 100 feet below the clouds right at the present time, which I know by uh -huh, law, we should be a little further away. Whoops, we just went into it. And uh, I made a little signal with the hand and Justice has taken it down now to about 7,000. I usually let him go ahead and fly, but sometimes we get the tail in the clouds. We just turned off the uh, booster pumps. Fuel pressure's holding good. Pressure's, temperature's all good. Suction excellent. We're running with uh, an ADF and a uh, VOR. And we'll be intercepting the radial in about 10 minutes. There is no VFR allowed on airways, so the poor old VFR fellow has to uh, scrape along underneath the airways. In this particular area, uh, the airway starts at 8,000. And what we're doing, we're going underneath the airway, and uh, we'll be crossing underneath, getting out the other side, and we'll stay at 7,500 all the way to Malindi. As we go down to Malindi from Nairobi, the bottom of the airway drops, but it will be over on our right, and we will not be interfering with the airway structure. Well, I don't think we better try going over top of that. Let's, yeah, let's go down the valley to the left here. And about 10 miles ahead, we should be able to go right. Yeah, and by then we should be almost on the radio. We're just passing over an area called Machacos, and it's a real garden basket of this part of Africa. Hills all around, and good runoff from the hills into the valleys. It's where they grow cabbages and maize, peas, corn, all or I guess I said corn and maize, didn't I? Anyway, all of the vegetables, and they have a terrific produce from this area. Unfortunately, it's all done by small plot holders, probably one acre, two acre, three acres, uh, called little shambas, and the citizens 
sit on these shambas and use grub hoes and uh, what we would call in Canada a mach machete. They call it a panga here. And they use these pangas for digging up weeds and uh, that sort of thing. What we would use a garden fork for. It. All labor intensive. You don't see machines running up and down the fields here. Off to our left and behind us about 10 miles on top of one of the hills called the Mua Hills is the new long-range surveillance radar. It's an AR-5 uh, radar made by Plessy from England and on the first first test that we've done on it it has picked up a Hercules at 180 miles and 20,000 feet. It is just excellent. Uh, that is without SSR. The SSR is being introduced this year into East Africa and, and first test it looks uh, very good. By Jan, no, correction, by June of 75, it will be mandatory to have SSR in most of the airspaces in East Africa. The radar site is on, as I said, on top of a hill, the Mua Hills, 7,500 feet, and uh, that would be approximately 15 miles from the airport, and they're using a, uh, just a minute, I'll check. They're sending all of the signals from the radar site down to the Nairobi Center Terminal via microwave telemetry. Uh, they had a few bugs in it during April, May, June of this year. They seem to have got it worked out, and as I said before, it's all starting to work quite well. 5 Yankee Alpha Tango Delta, 118.5, did you call? Sometimes the communications are very bad on this VHF area coverage scheme. Uh, you might be hearing a bunch of garbling in the background. Well, that's that's the communication, and it takes quite a while to get your ears tuned to it to sort out what the Dickens are talking about. Justice and I were slated to take a different aircraft today. The identification was five Yankee Alpha Papa Sierra. It was a fairly new. Cherokee 235 with autopilot. Uh, this one has autopilot, but uh, the other one had autopilot connected to the directional gyro, and it was excellent. Unfortunately, last Thursday afternoon, a Lufthansa crew took the aircraft to northern Kenya, and they were going over a lake called Rudolph, and on these northern areas, you usually have to fly over top of the, um, or the game warden's place, or the lodge, and you draw attention to the fact that you're there, and they send out a Land Rover to the local airstrip to pick you up. Uh, this Lufthansa crew are going over top of the lodge at Eli Springs on Lake Rudolph, and uh, doing a left turn, and I really believe he wasn't very familiar with the aircraft. He lost the horizon as he did his left turn after finishing the overshoot. And instead of turning left and climbing, he uh, turned left and descended, and he dragged a wing in the water, and four of them were instantly killed. So the aircraft is a write-off. We're a little late in going this morning. This aircraft was uh, slated for a check one on uh, Saturday and uh, we had to wait till 10 o'clock this morning before we could take off. I see we've just intercepted the radio. We've got another hill to go around about half a mile ahead, and then we turn right to a track of uh, 125 and fly direct to Malindi. The clouds are thinning out. We've got a, a probably a broken condition above us now. It looks to be about 700 feet thick. We'll probably be going through that in oh, about half an hour because as we go down towards the coast the land drops away to zero of course uh, but the clouds go with it. If the clouds are 2,000 feet above when we take off Nairobi they're usually 2,000 to 2,500 feet above the coast when we get down there. So rather than continually descend 
we find a hole sometimes and uh, zip up through and cruise level until we're about 40 miles away from the coast and then we do a cruise descent down to the area. Just resetting the directional gyro. Doesn't precess too much at these latitudes. Actually, they're very stable. It's very easy to fly down here with a compass. We have three degrees westerly variation, so you can just draw a line on a map and go. You don't have to worry too much about whether it's uh, this way or that way. That really spoils a person. Another thing that spoils a person flying here is the fact that there are no fronts, no occluded fronts, no cold fronts, no warm fronts. All you run into is uh, different types of stratus and cumulus sometimes, uh, well, sometimes, frequently, 40 mile wide CBs. We're just uh, dragging the clouds again. We're at 7,420, and uh, they're starting to come down. As I said earlier, we'll be finding a hole here pretty soon and going up. One other interesting thing, we have to fly on standard pressure. When you get above, uh, normally it's about 1,500 feet above a station you switch over to standard pressure. It's getting a bit rough again, flying in this cumulus area. We really hit some turbulence sometimes. There are many times where we've had to reduce speed to go through it as we're just hanging on our belts. One of the most interesting things of flying up here is the density altitude. Now, when we took off Wilson this morning, an elevation of 5,500, we had, in effect, an elevation of almost, well, I would guess, at least 7,500, because the temperature was over 20 degrees centigrade. And in some of the strips, we'll, uh, we run into, uh, I should say, more than 25 degrees centigrade, not 20 this morning. We've been in strips at uh, 4,500 foot high elevation with temperatures of 34 degrees centigrade and uh, with a gradual, a positive gradient in the runway. It takes some careful computation to make sure you get off on areas like that. Performance of the aircraft uh, when at normal flying here is greatly reduced because we're normally flying for instance, now at 7,500, we're over 10,000 on a density altitude. And when we go on the trip over towards uh, Uganda, we have to go over what they call the Mao Escarpment, and its elevation is 10,100. So we have to get up to uh, 11,000, and we're running a density altitude of 14. So we have to have a pretty good little airplane to get over there, and this Cherokee 235 seems to do it very well. We're uh, going to climb now. The clouds are becoming a bit of a bother. So uh, we've started uh, climbing now. We're going to go up to 9,500 indicated. Get above this. It's a lot smoother up there too. We're just going to be entering cloud here shortly. No, I don't have my instrument ticket. I've uh, got about 40 hours uh, instrument. And I took a lot of that here. Uh, there are a few pluses working with uh, the Directorate of Civil Aviation. One of them being, yeah, watch this, Justice, when you're going to enter cloud. J just use that. Uh, one of them being that uh, link training is free. And it you uh, take it as you are able, uh, depending on cancellations, just a minute, we've got to do a bit. we're in the cloud, we've got to do a bit of a right turn here. That's it, good, hold it. There, we're through it now. Beautiful, oh, it's lovely. Just fluffy, looks like you could step out uh, on it and, and walk. Well, anyway, the link is uh, free uh, as long as you do not interfere with regular bookings. And they use a, uh, a GAT, I can't remember, was it a GAT 1 or a GAT 2? It's a single engine uh, link, and it is excellent. It has VOR, ADF, and they program it for whatever you want and the way you go. 
so I've taken quite a few hours on that. And in addition to that, I have, uh, on every trip, I have practiced approaches and uh, done quite a bit of IFR work. Okay, we'll change fuel then. We just, uh, just was saying that the uh, aircraft is flying a bit uh, heavy on one side. Uh, we've got 80 gallons of fuel in the wings, four tanks. And we've been on the uh, left tank now for, what, 40 minutes. So we'll bang the boosters on here and we'll change over to the right side. Also, we might have to adjust the rudder trim to uh, get it sorted out. Okay, the booster's on. Over to the right main. See that the fuel pressure holds. We're now climbing through 8700 at a rate of uh, 400 feet a minute. That's not bad. This little airplane can really move. Mind you, there's only two of us on. Well, the fuel pressure's holding. Bang the boosters off, see if it still holds. And it's uh, just beautiful, calm. There's just a whiff of cirrus above us. And we're now above a scattered condition. It's, it's getting uh, beautiful as we head towards the coast. We'll be to the coast in another hour and 15 minutes. We're running at 2300 RPM with a constant speed drop. And uh, at this altitude, we can use full throttle without overboosting, and we're drawing 20 inches of manifold pressure. I have to adjust the mixture now that we're up higher. The other aircraft that we flew, the Papa Sierra, had, a, had an exhaust gas temperature gauge. This one doesn't. We just bring this back till the engine rough, is rough and uh, add a couple of bumps with the mixture and we're back into operation. We're climbing very nicely, we're up to 9.2. Temperature is 10 degrees centigrade at 9,200, and that's on uh, standard pressure. The airspeed indicator has an adjustment on it where I can introduce the temperature, the outside air temperature, and we read off true airspeed off the uh, airspeed indicator. Makes it very nice, I don't have to bother using a computer. Anyway, I was saying earlier that on this trip, uh, Justice and I will be giving some uh, local familiarization flights, including approaches to the Canadian trained air, uh, air cadets, Canadian trained air traffic controllers. We've got five to do in Dar, one in Mombasa, correction, one in Tanga. We have already done four in Mombasa on the last trip, that was a month and a half ago, and we take two at a time, give them about an hour flight, go through the approaches at their aerodrome, looking for visual markers, uh, uh, you name it, runway markings, phraseology procedures, IFR procedures, we'll do a hold over the station, etc. And uh, it seems to be well accepted. We're over a very desert-like area now, well east of Machacos. We're in an area called the Savo, T-S-A-V-O, it's Savo. Savo East National Park. We're flying just south of a Katui, K-I-T-U-I. Katui is the area where Justice is from. We're about 20 miles from his hometown, about 100 miles out of uh, Nairobi. Very desolate area. Most of Kenya is very desolate. It could easily turn into a desert. Very fragile. We go over miles and miles of dried up riverbeds and rivulet areas. Bone dry. All the area underneath us is brown. Some of it red brown. With the odd patch of green area where there might be a bit of water standing. And honest to goodness, I don't know how they live in those areas. But you see them walking around with their few goats and a few cows. They must be very sturdy cows to stand this kind of climate. I mean, no water. Get up to about 9.7, Justice, and then try coming down to it. Usually fine with this aircraft, but if we have much of a load on, which we really don't have this morning, about full fuel, if 
we take it up about 100 to 150 feet above the cruising altitude and then come down in it, we can get a five knots faster out of it. I'm going to tune in another beacon here very soon called the Manyani beacon. Get a cross bearing. Now we're a little too far away from Manyani. I'll swing back to a back bearing off of the Alpha Lima at Nairobi. Looks like we're going to run into uh, a reduced visibility with lots of haze up ahead. Although we still have 10 miles. We're over top of the cloud condition now. Just scattered. It looks broken up ahead. We're about 40 minutes out of Melindi. We still haven't been able to pick up the Melindi beacon. We do have the Mombasa VOR and the Mombasa MDB, so we're getting good uh, side cuts now. QDRs or QDMs as they say here. I've got a QDR of uh, 345 out of Mombasa. And when we're over top Melindi, it will be 035. Well, I thought we had Melindi, but it's showing 60 degrees off to our left, and I know we're not that far off, of course. So we're somewhere right now in Never Never Land. Trying to find the Galana River. Should be off to our right, about 15 miles. Might have to go down below these clouds to sort out where we are. Although, as I said earlier, it's nice and easy to navigate here. You just hold on the compass heading and you'll end up where you are, where you want to get. You hit the coast and you go east and you go up or down and it's very easy. Do you hear that noise? Boy, what a racket. That's what's coming in over the, on the Melindi frequency for the ADF. Well, we'll see if we can get an ADF bearing off of that. No. 90 degrees off. Oh, that's bad. There, we got an action on the needle. Another 10 miles, we should be able to pick it up okay. Melindy Tower, 5 Yankee Alpha Tango Delta, 118.3. Melindy Tower, 5 Tango Delta. Barely reading you, I'll call again in five minutes, over. Melindy Tower, 5 Yankee Alpha Tango Delta, 118.3. 5 Yankee Alpha Tango Delta, Melindy Tower, Melindy 5 Tango Delta will be your station in 22 minutes. Request landing information. Melindy Tango Delta will report the control zone boundary. Runway 17 is active. Say the Q and H in inches of mercury, please. going down through a hole in a broken condition. We're down to 7,100. And we'll be in Melindi in about 20 minutes. We cannot see the coast yet because of the cloud. We're on a QDR of 008 from Mombasa. So we're getting closer to Melindi. And we're on a good ADF track to Melindi, we're tracking now 110. We can see the coast quite clear now, we're below the clouds and about 18 miles from the coast. And it looks very calm out there. Probably be about a 10 knot, knot wind blowing, that's all. May as well go down to 3.5, eh? The VFR altitudes are even and odd, plus 500. going through 5-5 five, five to 3-5. Melindy Tower, 
Five Yankee Alpha Tango Delta, control zone boundary. Right base for 1-7, Wilco. East Air Center, 5 Yankee Tango Delta. 5 Tango Delta in contact Melindy. We'll see you later. Right base for 17. I'm going to take a bit of power off. Do you see the airport yet? I don't. Oh yes, I see the town. Yes. We're truing out about 170 at the present time on descent, which covers the last 30 miles very quickly. Temperature at 5,000 feet is plus 20 degrees centigrade. Doesn't sound, uh, sound like Melindy is too busy today. Yeah, about 20 degrees to the left. We've still got about 10 miles to go, I think. The reef is now becoming invisible. It's about half a mile to a mile out from the shore. Stretches for miles to the left and to the right. Just beautiful. We're starting to get into palm trees now in the last 15 miles. Surprising, I thought palm trees would be a long way inland, but they're very uh, restricted, shall I say, to the coastline. We'll do the landing check early okay. so that we don't have to worry about it on final. Brakes are off. Okay. Undercarriage is down. <laughs> Don't have to worry too much. Mags. Oh. Mixture I'm going to increase. Yeah. Fully rich. Yeah. Master. Pitch. I can't change the pitch yet. We're a little too... Well, I can increase it a bit. Yeah. As we slow up, I'll finish it. Pressures, temperatures, fuel, booster pump on, left main sufficient, I think we should switch over to the right, okay, take her back to the right, is it notched, good, okay, pressures holding, and the switches on, tied in and hatches. Temperature's 24 degrees. LND Tower, 5 Tango Delta, right base, runway 17. We got courage to land out of that. Tango Delta, you were broken. I say again, the UI side, it can't land the wind 1908, 1, 2, 1. Start to land. 